Repeat after me. Quand même. It has a silent U. It has a silent D. You have the E sound with the E and the accent in même. And we have a nasal en in quand. Quand même. Quand même. Okay, you can say it probably, but can you use it properly in French? And are you confident with more colloquial, everyday spoken French sentences such as Euh, ben non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Hmm, that's difficult. And how can you stop freezing in the middle of French conversation and stop thinking in French? Let's revisit a few previous lessons and see how you can get from kind of knowing French to really getting it. I'm Géraldine, c'est parti! Il est sympa, mais il parle beaucoup quand même. Je ne vais quand même pas faire de l'autostop. Merci quand même! Quand même is a very short expression that we use a lot in French, but it is very difficult to translate. The word for word translation is when same, but it doesn't mean anything. How can you use it in everyday spoken French? And how can you spot whether it's positive or negative in a conversation? Let's dive in. Quand même, quand même is mostly used in spoken French. It is invariable, as we say. It doesn't change with the subject or anything. By the way, I want to say that up front, it is so used in spoken French that some people don't even know how to spell it anymore. They write quand même, but never ever ever write this, please. First, you can use quand même when you want to insist on the contradiction between two ideas, the pros and the cons, for example. But there is no perfect way to translate it, as you will see. For example, Il est sympa, mais quand même, il parle beaucoup. He is nice, but still, he talks a lot. Il est sympa, mais quand même, il parle beaucoup. Another example. Je suis française et je fais quand même parfois des erreurs de français. I am French and yet... I sometimes make mistakes in French. Je suis française et je fais quand même parfois des erreurs de français. A third example. Tu ne veux pas manger tes légumes? Eh bah, tu les manges quand même. You don't want to eat your vegetables? Well, you will eat them anyway. Tu veux pas manger tes légumes? Eh bah, tu les manges quand même. The meaning of quand même even leaked into everyday politeness. For example, when you're asking someone for help, but they can't help you for any reason, but they still seem quite friendly, you can answer merci quand même. Thanks anyway. Merci quand même. We just saw that quand même is used to stress a contradiction, an opposition between two ideas. But you can also use quand même to express a second meaning that is way more subtle. It is in those examples. Tu ne vas pas traverser l'Atlantique à la nage quand même. You're not going to swim across the Atlantic, aren't you? It means, tell me you're not going to swim across the Atlantic. Okay, you see the meaning? In French it is, tu ne vas pas traverser l'Atlantique à la nage quand même. You see this meaning of quand même? Let's look at another example. Quand même, arriver avec une heure de retard, c'est pas sympa? I'm disappointed. It's not cool to arrive an hour late. Here the meaning is really arriving an hour late is not nice. It's too much. Okay, it's the quand même has this meaning of it's too much. In French it is quand même. Arriver avec une heure de retard, c'est pas sympa. Here, in those two examples, the quand même is used to express a disapproval. It is for something that goes beyond the limits of what is reasonable in social life. It is really stressing the difference between what you just heard, the person told you, and the usual boundaries of social life. 
as you can see, quand même is a way to express a slightly negative judgment without being too personal. You're not only implying that they're acting outside of the common boundaries, but you're not really disapproving by yourself, but you still think that it is socially improper. And of course, you can even use this with verbs in a negative sentence with the structure ne plus a verb plus quand même and de pas. And this makes a negative sentence. For example, le train s'est arrêté. Qu'est-ce que je peux faire? Je ne vais quand même pas faire de l'autostop. That means the train stopped. What can I do? I'm not going to start hitchhiking. And what is implied here, it is that it is beyond the limits of what I would accept to do. So let's go back to the example in French. Le train s'est arrêté. Qu'est-ce que je peux faire? Je ne vais quand même pas faire de l'autostop. Another example. Tu n'as quand même pas mangé tout le camembert. Si, it means you didn't eat the whole camembert, did you? Because that would be extraordinary to eat the whole camembert yourself and it would be very rude and improper. Tu n'as quand même pas mangé tout le camembert. Si. Finally, though, quand même can be used to insist on different emotions, to emphasize them, such as la surprise, la surprise, ou l'admiration, l'admiration. For example, alors ça, quand même, je n'y attendais pas. Wow, I was not expecting that. Alors ça, quand même, je ne m'y attendais pas. Another example. Ah ouais, quand même c'est impressionnant. Wow, that is surprisingly impressive. Ah ouais, quand même, c'est impressionnant. Another emotion is l'incompréhension. When you don't understand something, you're suspicious. For example, j'ai encore une pub Facebook pour un truc dont on a parlé hier au téléphone. Quand même, c'est bizarre. Once again, I have a Facebook ad for something we talked about on the phone. Well, isn't that strange? Or uh, we can say more, I am telling you, this is weird. You can also express la colère, la colère, rage, or anger, and l'indignation, outrage. For example, quand même, il peut pas t'envoyer un message, ça prendrait deux minutes. Come on, he can't send you a text message that would only take him two minutes. And the implicit idea here is that that's outrageous. Quand même, il peut pas t'envoyer un message, ça lui prendrait deux minutes. And finally, quand même can be used in a positive way. For example, pour rassurer quelqu'un, pour rassurer quelqu'un, to make someone feel better. For example, c'est pas grave, tu as quand même fait de ton mieux. C'est pas grave, tu as quand même fait de ton mieux. That's not too bad, at least you gave your best or you still gave your best. So here you go, that's why quand même is so used in spoken French. We can use it for insisting on a contradiction. For example, c'est beau mais quand même c'est cher. That's beautiful, but still it's expensive. We can use it to express disapproval, something that is not reasonable. For example, quand même, une heure de retard, c'est beaucoup. That's too much. Being one hour late is way too much. It's a lot. Expressing emotions as well, like surprise, admiration, or even anger. For example, ah ouais, quand même. Oh wow, I'm speechless or even politeness and warmth at last. For example, merci quand même, thanks anyway, or je suis quand même là pour toi, I am here for you anyway. The 2001 great French movie Amélie is a fantastic story about life and joy. You probably saw it 
at least once, maybe several times if you studied it at school or with the Alliance Francaise, it is very, very famous abroad. But even with subtitles, it is very difficult to understand all the details of the conversation and you probably missed quite a lot of subtleties. So today, let's practice your oral comprehension together using examples from Amélie. Amélie, or in its French title, Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain. Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain takes place in Paris in 1997. Or at least a much cleaner, much more magical version of Paris than in reality. Yes, just like you probably saw in Emily in Paris. But good for you, this movie is not built on old cliches and boring writing. Instead, it seeks to spread joy in the little things of life. I am not going to explain all the popular culture references that are in Emily or all the French culture that is in there. Today, let's concentrate on understanding spoken French behind the subtitles because characters can show their own personalities or their background with even just a few lines or even one word and you might miss it if you only read the subtitles for instance the waitress georgette speaks with her own accent here, if you listen very closely, you can hear that she's eating some vowels. She doesn't say je sais pas, she says je sais pas. She also doesn't say sera, she says sera. And at last, que l'autre timbré becomes Claude Timbré. So she really cuts some vowels. And these spoken French shortcuts also hide a more subtle thing is that Georgette actually speaks with a slight accent of rural eastern France. The nasals are a bit more nasal than they could be with me, for example, and the A ah sounds more like an O. Oh. You can hear it very well in the way that she accentuates l'eau timbrée là. She says l'eau timbrée là. Ah, mon Dieu, je sais pas comment sera le nouveau, mais en tout cas, ce sera jamais aussi pire que l'eau timbrée là, avec son magnétophone. It is really subtle, but, and it is close to the more well-known accent of Northern France that you might have heard in other movies as well. It is associated in media with more down-to-earth characters and less sophisticated people than these snobby Parisians. Then another character speaks with a Southern accent. Monsieur, tu la connais. Depuis quand? Depuis toujours. Dans tes rêves. This talking picture is a dream of Nino, the character that you can see in bed. But it has its own personality because Nino has a very wide imagination. The southern accent is more associated with a warm and outgoing personality. Did you catch the accent? Here he doesn't say, tu la connais, which would be more Parisian with this E. Eh. He says, tu la connais instead and he's subtly pronouncing the n in nasal vowels and the final silent a uh. for example he doesn't say dans tes rêves as i would say he says dans tes rêves dans tes rêves monsieur tu la connais depuis quand depuis toujours dans tes rêves and of course the way that people speak can reveal things about themselves even with one single word. Justement, elle y pense. Elle est en train de réfléchir à un stratagème. Did you catch that? Un stratagème, un stratagème is a ploy. Un stratagème. It is a very complicated word. And in spoken French, we would tend to use a shorter word. For example, we would use a synonym as un plan, for example, or un moyen. Un plan is a plan and a moyen is a way or a mean. This is much simpler. But here Amélie uses the word stratagème. It is a sign. It shows that she spends a lot of time thinking about those plans and those ploys instead of actually tackling her own problems. And that is her character flow. The movie talks more about her problem, especially in that scene. But you can already tell a lot even from just one word, if you have the spoken French context about it. 
Generally, you can also practice listening to basic everyday French conversation in this movie. Bonjour, monsieur. Euh, je vous appelle pour vous signaler qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. Euh, ben, non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Here, Amélie starts with a very polite, thought-out sentence. She says, Bonjour, monsieur. Je vous appelle pour vous signaler qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. It means, hi, I am calling to tell you that one of your booths is out of order. And by the way, you can use the same structure of je vous appelle pour if you need to make a polite phone call. Can you repeat it? Repeat after me. Bonjour, monsieur. Je vous appelle pour vous signaler qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. Here, in terms of vocabulary, you can also notice that en panne could be replaced by hors service. Hors service, instead of en panne, it works very well. Then the person on the phone asks a question that you can't hear and she answers in incorrect, informal, everyday spoken French. She says, euh, ben non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Euh, ben non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Mm, no, but I think there is something that is stuck. This is very important because here you can see much better the signs of spoken French because it's much more spontaneous. She says ben, she says un truc for a thing, she says ya instead of il y a, and at last she doesn't say qui est, she says Yeah, this is very, very spoken French. In written French, we would say differently. We would say, all right, obviously, non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a quelque chose qui est coincé. Non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a quelque chose qui est coincé. In that phone call, she sounds as if she had rehearsed the first sentence, but she was surprised by the question and she had to improvise her answer in informal everyday French. There are tons of other great French conversations in this movie because it is so well written, but you can also use other resources if you want to practice your listening comprehension. When a French speaking person is speaking too fast or when a sentence is unclear, a tip is to try to rephrase what you did understand. For example, attends, tu es en train de dire que Wait, you're saying that? Attends, tu es en train de dire que... And then you add what you understood. For example, attends, tu es en train de dire que le musée du Louvre est à nouveau ouvert? Wait, you're saying that the Louvre Museum is open again? Or maybe you just understood the topic. So you can ask, attends, tu es en train de dire quoi sur le musée du Louvre? Wait a minute, so what are you saying about the Louvre Museum? Attends, tu es en train de dire quoi sur le musée du Louvre? And that's everyday spoken French. If you want, you can also use the tag c'est bien ça, c'est bien ça, is that right? For example, tu cherches le meilleur restaurant à Grenoble, c'est bien ça? You're looking for the best restaurant in Grenoble, is that right? Tu cherches le meilleur restaurant à Grenoble, c'est bien ça? In general, sharing what you understood is much better than staying silent and dumbfounded. And if you're totally confused, yes, you can ask them to repeat, of course. But be careful because if you ask, est-ce que tu peux répéter plus doucement? Can you repeat more slowly? Est-ce que tu peux répéter plus doucement? Is ambiguous because plus doucement also means softer, quieter. And that's not what you want. The very clear and unambiguous way to ask someone to repeat in French is Est-ce que tu peux répéter plus lentement? Can you please repeat more slowly? Again, est-ce que tu peux répéter plus lentement? Throw in a silter play there and you're good to go, unless they randomly switch to English.
I made a whole lesson on that topic, but the main sentence to take away from it is Je voudrais pratiquer mon français, alors je ne veux pas passer en anglais. I want to practice my French, so I don't want to switch to English. Je voudrais pratiquer mon français, alors je ne veux pas passer en anglais. Ok This way, the other person won't think you don't like their English. It's just that you want to practice your French. But even if you did understand what was being said to you, maybe you need a little bit of time to make a French sentence in your head. But don't let the rhythm die down too much. After all, that's all part of l'art de la conversation, the art of conversation, l'art de la conversation, which is a very, very big thing in France since at least the literary salon of the 18th century. Toujours fidèle à sa conduite, l'abbé, sans nuire à sa santé, peut faire deux mots d'esprit de suite, l'un en hiver, l'autre en été. Even when you understand what's going on, it's hard to answer du tac au tac immediately. Du tac au tac. For example, what would you say after that? Improviser. Oui, mais alors c'est un mot qui veut tout dire et rien improviser parce que improviser, c'est de ne pas savoir ce que ce que va dire l'autre et dans la vie, on ne sait pas ce que va dire l'autre, donc on improvise. When you have something to add and you need a bit of time to make a sentence in your head, you can still say something. For example, you can say something as simple as oui, mais en fait, yes, but really, oui, mais en fait. This way, people will see that you have something to say and they will wait for you to deliver it. Repeat after me. Oui, mais en fait. Oui, mais en fait. With the little T at the end. Great. These sentences will launch you into the next sentence. It gets the French part of your brain going and the rest comes much more easily. You can also be more explicit with something like Ok, deux secondes, je réfléchis. Ok, I need two seconds, I need to think. Ok, deux secondes, I say seconde, deux secondes, je réfléchis. And that's something that even I use in my everyday life. Sometimes you need some time to think about what you heard to provide a good answer. And this is the kind of authentic French structure that will always keep the conversation flowing no matter your level. Now let's play a game. I'm going to give you several more of those in a row and you can just pick one or two, pause the video and repeat after me as many times as you want so you can learn them and feel confident when using them. Are you ready? Go! En fait, en fait, for in fact, en fait. Another one, je me dis, je me dis, for to me, je me dis. En même temps, en même temps, for on the other hand, en même temps. Another one, d'un autre côté, d'un autre côté. It means also on the other hand, d'un autre côté. Cela dit, cela dit. Again, on the other hand, cela dit. D. It helps you to vary what you're saying. Le truc, c'est que. The thing is. Le truc, c'est que. Truc is thing for thing. Le truc, c'est que. Attends, wait. Attends. Attends. Je pense que. I think that. Je pense que. Je pense que. And now you're ready to join your next French Conversations. Félicitations! Or at least you have the tools to improvise the rest. Because after all... Improviser. Oui, mais alors c'est un mot qui veut tout dire et rien. Improviser, parce que... Improviser, c'est de ne pas savoir ce que, ce que va dire l'autre. Et dans la vie, on ne sait pas ce que va dire l'autre. Donc on improvise. How to think in French is my student's biggest wish as well as I want to understand fast spoken French. The good thing is they go well together. 
thinking in French is what is going to help you speak French effortlessly. At the moment, I assume that every time you want to speak French, you're ashamed or embarrassed because you've been studying French maybe for 30 years and you even spend a semester in Paris as a student, but every time you have to come up with a simple sentence, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't come up. Your brain is stuck. So what's happening? The issue is that the French that you learned at school and maybe you're still learning is stuck in your brain gathering dust. And every time you need it, it is actually so rusty that it is completely useless. The key is to keep your French alive, just like you would water a plant every day. And no, you don't have to move to France to do that. Well, anyway, you couldn't do that at the moment. The key is to use your everyday life and switch that to French. And the easiest way is something that you use almost every day, which is your grocery list. We are going to do this in French. And I say easy, but I should not say easy. I should say simple because when I was living in England, after 10 years of studying English, I could not go to the market to buy anything because I didn't have the vocabulary and was too embarrassed to not know that. So I'm going to say the simple way. So I'm going to do that on my list de course, which is the grocery list. I was on my way to go shopping. So I'm going to use that. You can do that on your phone. You can do that on paper. It doesn't matter. So what I need is courgette. What I need is uh, camembert. What I need is pat as well. And at last, moule, because I want to do moule marinière tonight. That's a level one. You don't need me to tell you that. That's very simple. But the key is what's after. So after that, you have several levels according to how comfortable you feel in French and what you want to practice. So then we're going to add a quantity. So courgette, I need quatre. So quatre courgettes. Camembert, just one. So un camembert. Uh, for pat, I need un kilo. So I'm going to add un kilo de pat. And the key is to write everything with letters so you can practice your numbers as well. And then at last for moule, I don't know yet how much. So I'm going to write des moules. Okay. Level three of that is to actually add a verb. So you practice your verbs as well. For courgette, acheter. Simple. For camembert, I'm going to write choisir because if you ever ate any camembert, you know that you have to choose it to your tasting, not just pick any. Uh, for pâte, it will be trouvé because finding uh, the pâte is not that easy at the moment. And for moule, I'm going to write prendre for take. That's good enough. And the last level is to add the place. So for courgette, it will be au marché. That's pretty easy. For uh, le camembert, it will be chez le fromager. Un kilo de pâte, it will be au supermarché. And for les moules, it is à la poissonnerie. Okay, that's good enough. So you see here, just with my grocery list, I practice my French, my writing, my spelling. I thought about it. And this way, your brain is going to switch to French much more easily and it's going to help you speak French, understand French much better. And by the way, if your phone is actually switched to French or you added a French keyboard to it, it's going to correct your spelling. So that's a very, very practical thing. This is really the kind of thing that seems very simple and basic, but it's going to help you switch to thinking in French for real and for good. This is something that you never ever forget. Today we saw a few tips to help you get French. You don't have to remember them all, but write down a few that would be useful to you. You will find the full lessons that I've used in the playlist right here. So click on your screen to access those lessons. I will see you in the next video. A tout de suite.